justice, mm -hmm. uh, crime, incarceration. Al already then, incarceration was a major issue of young people that I was working with as a social worker in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I am the product of Georgia grandparents who each, my grandmother especially, was deeply involved in politics in Chicago and she took me as a little boy. Mm -hmm. Took me as a little boy to the alderman's office mm -hmm. to show me how politics work, <laughs> how it doesn't work, how to organize communities. So mm -hmm. from a very young age, I was tempted by community organizing, tempted by uh, questions of social justice. I did not come to uh, Dr. King easily. I grew up in the age of black power, and, 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 and black power was the ideology that drove me. Mm -hmm. But I quickly turned in my own study to the power of Dr. King. Mm -hmm. And so it was a, it was a, I'm a latecomer mm -hmm. uh, to the study of Dr. King, but also to understand the power of Dr. King mm -hmm. and his ministry for social justice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, Dr. Baldwin, I think we're just about out of this first segment. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I think one thing we could say about you during this last minute, and when we come back, we've got eight minutes and we'll allow, we'll start with you. Uh -huh. But uh, one thing we can uh, say about you is that you've been with us yeah. almost since the very, very oh, first absolutely. day, and yeah. that uh, you've mm -hmm. delivered us uh, excellent information, but you've also delivered us e excellent in individuals, yeah. and uh, we're delighted to have the two individuals that you have with you uh, this morning, and mm -hmm. when we come back, gentlemen, what we'll do, we'll start with uh, Dr. Baldwin, mm -hmm. and then we'll go to you, Dr. Anderson, mm -hmm. and then Dr. Howard. We'll have each of you to speak to some specific things in reference to uh, some of the reasons that you're here. Yeah. And so what we'll do, we'll take our first commercial break, and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. And then uh -huh. we'll launch into a discussion the, the, that's of, right. uh -huh. yeah, Sorry. of the book, because we're all contributors mm -hmm. to, the, to mm -hmm. the volume. Yeah. yeah well, it's uh, going to be shown, right? On. Yeah, um, yeah, they've got it here. Uh -huh. <coughs> so, mm. Yeah, I'll introduce us again, and we'll start with you since we uh, left mm -hmm. off with uh, Dr. Emerson. Mm -hmm. and uh, have you to make some statements in reference to your situation, because even though you've been with us thousands of times, <laughs> But mm -hmm. uh, there might be just one individual, there. Yeah. <laughs> one individual there uh, from Vanderbilt University, and etc. Mm -hmm. And see, and so I. Uh, yeah, we'll have eight minutes. So let's I'm move you back a little bit. Oh, okay. How's that? I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> you're happy. <laughs> and so, Doc Paul, oh. when we when we come back. We'll start, you might make some statements in reference to, you know, background, Yeah, et background, then but sort of launch us into the into discussion. Into the discussion in reference to this, mm -hmm. and then uh, when we, I realize that we're into discussion You're time, right. pick mm -hmm. up on what he leaves mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Drs. Baldwin, Anderson, and Howard, and they're giving us some information in reference to their background, education, and some of their experiences. And I think we were able to get that information from uh, Howard and uh, uh, <coughs> Johnson. Anderson. Anderson, Howard and Anderson, <laughs> and waiting on uh, Dr. Baldwin yeah. to uh, make some statements in reference to that, and then we'll allow you to talk about Dr. Anderson and, and Dr. Uh, Howard, yeah. and they'll talk, about, and we'll use that period to uh, talk about some things in yeah, reference to yeah. this book. I'm Lewis Baldwin, and I've been here many, many times to talk to Dr. Haney, not only about Dr. King, but a number of other subjects. Thousands. Uh, I'm a native of Camden, Alabama. I grew up in uh, Camden, Wilcox County, Alabama, educated in the public schools of Alabama, uh, graduated from high school in 67, uh, matriculated at Talladega College from 1967 to 71. Uh, from there to Crozer Theological Seminary where I received the Master of Arts and the Master of Divinity degrees and, and at, from there to Northwestern University 
uh, where in 1980 I received the PhD degree in American Christianity. And since that time, 1980, I've been involved in King Scholarship, uh, published a number of books and many articles. And we are here today to talk about uh, scholarship on Dr. King. I've been involved with Dr. Anderson and Dr. Howard in a book on the spiritual leadership of Dr. King. And we want to talk about our different contributions to that book and what that book means in terms of the advancement of King scholarship. Very good. And of course, Dr. Anderson, let's have you submit to make some statements within the framework of what Dr. Baldwin has mm -hmm. said. Okay, sure. Uh, Dr. Baldwin and I have collaborated on the book Revise Our Soul Again. It was my first attempt to actually take seriously scholarship on Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. As most people who don't mean recognize that, that I was very slow at coming to actually appreciate the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., given my own background in, and being immersed in black power, black theology, in which uh, I had to find ways of reconciling uh, the re relationship between black power and the work of King. That became a lot easier as I reflected upon my upbringing. It became easier when I saw and, and began to appreciate the work of my grandmother who certainly had pictures of King all through the house. But it didn't touch me until I became old enough to understand that the work of justice really requires power. And the work of power requires something more than just our intellect, our strategies, and policies. So it was in that sense that I began to turn to what made King so powerful a leader as he was. And it wasn't just his education. It wasn't just the work he was doing. He had an inner strength that was powerfully motivating and provided motivation for continuing to do the work of justice. And it was that entry point that I began to do my study of King and religious experience. Very good. And Dr. Howard. Yes, sir. Um, I grew up in Los Angeles um, during the LA riots. Um, there was other racial um, animosity that was going on during the time. And so my consciousness was shaped by what is the role of the church in a milieu where, um, you know, the beating of Rodney King had happened and um, the cops were acquitted that it beat him. And so I, I was wrestling with these questions, especially as someone who grew up hearing about the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I wanted to pursue this question of how was the Holy Spirit active within the civil rights movement? And when I came to Dr. King as a, a Baptist preacher um, and as someone who was also nurtured in the black church tradition, the Holy Spirit figures prominently in how we conceive of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. For example, from the scripture, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Martin Luther King would often quote that scripture. And so as I begin to investigate um, his theology, I found that the Holy Spirit does figure prominently in his thought, and the Holy Spirit moves in a way that acts within history to basically turn the dial of history and move it uh, toward the will of God against um, um, efforts to uh, against white efforts and other efforts to keep uh, black people oppressed. And so Martin Luther King saw God as active within history, and he saw um, the Holy Spirit as active even in his own heart and in the hearts of others as God's spirit meeting the human spirit mm -hmm. to bring about transformation, to bring about humility, to bring about love, and to bring about re reconciliation and togetherness. And so it was just exciting for me um, to see the train of thought, even when he was in seminary, to see how the Holy Spirit uh, was a central thread that ran through his theological um, theological thinking. Mm -hmm. Dr. Baldwin, bring us through this segment. We've got about two minutes. To yes, well, the focus of the book that we've written really is on the spiritual leadership of Dr. King. Uh, many people often see him as a civil rights leader, but we focus on Dr. King as primarily a spiritual leader, and the civil rights component was, was really a component of his spiritual leadership. Mm -hmm. So when you speak of his civil rights leadership, it was a component of his spiritual leadership. And we are also focusing on how Dr. King viewed life, uh, the universe, human relations in, in spiritual terms. And I think that's often missed in much of the scholarship. And, and Dr. Uh, Howard has talked about his focus on, on the uh, Holy Spirit in Dr. King's thinking. Uh, Dr. Anderson has looked at the basic question of, of, of the spiritual dynamic in King's life. King was speaking of an inner person when he spoke of spirituality. 
It's, it's a dynamic that speaks to the inner person. And he often used spirituality and religious experience interchangeably to refer to the same, same thing. But, but the important thing is to understand that Dr. King was, not, was a paradigm of a radical activist and contagious spirituality. That, that, the, that the spiritual figured prominently in his language about himself, in his language about others, and in his language about the world around us. Well, I tell you, Dr. Baldwin, Dr. Anderson, Dr. Howard, that uh, there's a spirit that's here right now mm -hmm. that's present dealing with Dr. Martin Luther King that uh, causes each of you to say the things mm -hmm that you have to say about it. I can look at you, Anderson, mm -hmm. and I see tears, mm -hmm. literally, mm -hmm. in your eyes. Mm -hmm. and the same thing, Howard, I can tell the spirit, mm -hmm. and, 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 and all of it is caused by mm -hmm. the contact, mm -hmm. I'm sure, mm -hmm. that you've had, the study that you've had, not only about Dr. King, but with Dr. Baldwin, mm -hmm. because I think that I've said on many occasions that he has written more books yes. about yes. Dr. King yes. than any other person right. in the world. Right. And so let me thank the three of you right. uh, for that information. We're going to come back and we'll have a 10-minute segment mm -hmm. that will allow each of you to talk about your specializations, mm -hmm. but that's what we wanted. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short okay. commercial break. I tell you, that's a good conversation. I like to hear that. So, and so we'll have 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then we go to the second show. Yeah, then we'll have a second show. Mm -hmm. And then we'll start with you, Dr. Howard, and uh, take uh, out of that 10, two or three minutes and talk about what you consider to be your specialization. The same thing, take mm -hmm. an equal amount of time. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Baldwin will end us up mm -hmm. for the, mm -hmm. uh, that will be the last segment okay. of this particular show. And okay. we'll stand still. Mm -hmm. And then we'll start over again with a second show mm -hmm. so that we've got everybody in place now, mm -hmm. and et cetera. And so we'll, this won't be part one and part two because okay. this show will be all right. by itself. Right. Mm -hmm. But it will be done by the okay. three of you after mm -hmm. that. So okay. we'll go through the whole introduction and the whole mm -hmm. thing uh, mm -hmm. as earlier. Maybe we can think creatively about this is King's 90th birthday. Uh -huh. And a lot of celebrations are going on around the country. What? relevance does the scholarship that we are doing has to what's going on mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. terms of this mm -hmm. celebration. Mm -hmm. King would have been 90 yesterday, 90 mm -hmm. years old. And, and what we're doing, of course, is in, we're involved in groundbreaking scholarship on Dr. King because his spirituality is often ignored. What we'll do uh, when we come back, we'll start off with you, Dr. Baldwin. Mm -hmm. And we'll use that as our introduction. Mm -hmm. to speak, you know, in reference to that, what you just spoke to. Mm -hmm. And then, Dr. Anderson, you'll take it up. And then, uh, uh, Dr. Howard, mm -hmm. uh, you'll sort of end it off, and then we'll be able to get and out of this. And I talk about my contribution. Yeah. He yeah. talks about okay. it. Uh -huh. Because each of, he has the first chapter in the book, and he mm -hmm. has chapter four. Mm -hmm. And they both have made contributions mm -hmm. to the understanding of Dr. King's spirituality. Uh, yeah, now this is our 10-minute segment, right? Okay, very good. Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. The topic is the spiritual leadership of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And we have as our guests this morning, uh, Drs. Baldwin, Anderson, and Howard. And of course, Dr. Baldwin, let's see if we can start off this uh, final segment by giving you an opportunity to make some statements in reference to how the three of you worked together mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. in terms of bringing this book forth. And uh, you can sort of lay out some of the things that you would like for them to talk about in reference to this so that it'll get us through this 10 minutes. Yes, uh, this is Dr. King's 90th birthday uh, yesterday. January 15th was his 90th birthday, and we think the book is particularly important uh, in that regard because what we've tried to do is to look at, uh, take a look at what we consider to be the very essence of Dr. King. Uh, I think 
you can't understand a person until you really understand their spirituality, the person's spirituality. And what we've tried to do is to look at Dr. King's spirituality and look at his spiritual life and how that translated into nonviolent campaigns for the movement, uh, for, the movement for human dignity, freedom, justice, etc. Dr. Anderson has talked a lot about uh, the, Dr. King's understanding of the soul and, 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 and his spirituality, uh, which was central to his life. Dr. Howard has written a chapter on the Holy Spirit in Dr. King's life. I focus primarily on Dr. King's personal prayer life, which I think is very important in understanding his spirituality. He was very much into what we call personal prayer, prayer retreats, uh, 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 confession, uh, all of the other, other elements of prayer, meditation, et cetera, fasting, uh, because he considered that very important. So my focus had been primarily on his personal prayer life, his personal spirituality, and how that translated into what uh, his socio-political praxis. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to take all that into account when we talk about Dr. King. Mm -hmm. Dr. Anderson. The work I've done and continue to do, I do as a religious philosopher. I'm very interested not only in ideas, but in the power of ideas. I came to the study of King and the soul life in search of what was the motivating powers of it. I try to treat King not in a heroic way, but to understand King as a human being in a holistic way. Yeah, and all too often we bracket, we bracket the motivation behind and underneath and inside that keeps the person going when everything outside says stop, oh, give yeah. up, not worth it. Mm -hmm. I was interested in what motivates that soul life. And so my work was primarily on understanding King's spirituality as a motivating force of hope how hope and joy were the very strong motivating structures against despair and the power of giving it up. In fact, I talk about two episodes that were most important to me in looking at that, and one of them I still, I weep. To this day, I weep over the souls of those uh, children in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. But the power of that moment in King's life was the most devastating moment of his entire experience. And he had to speak to a nation about the loss of these children, these innocents. And it's at that moment that despair was so real, so deep, so human, that cynicism was easy. And yet he had to find the strength out of all of that to find a word, a word of hope. And he put it into words of those children. Maybe these children will have something to say to the next generation. So if we look at the 90th birthday of King, we're still asking that question, how does hope, how does faith, how does love continue to project us when everything else goes against us? I think that was the lesson I learned in working on King and his soul life in terms of uh, spirituality. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mm -hmm. Howard, carry us out. Yes, sir. Um, like Dr. Baldwin, uh, I mean, sorry, like Dr. Anderson, uh, I had a question of what caused King to keep going uh, when things got tough. And um, one of the, the things that stood out to me was his kitchen vision experience. Mm -hmm. um, King was ready to give up. Um, he had been under severe death threats. And one night, he sat down at the table with his head in his hands, and he said, I can't take it anymore. He had just got a phone call that said they were going to take his life if he didn't leave Montgomery. This was during the bus boycott. And he said at that moment, he began to pray. And he said, Lord, I'm trying to do what's right. I'm trying to do your will. Um, I need your help. I need you to help me make it through. And he said at that moment, he heard an inner voice say, uh, Martin Luther King, stand up for justice, stand up for righteousness, and lo, I will be with you always. And so in that instance, um, that resonated with me because coming out of a Pentecostal tradition, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about the Holy Spirit speaking mm -hmm. to us and God speaking mm -hmm. to us. And I like the way when I saw, uh, what I saw in King was that he applied that to social action. He said, because of the voice of the Lord, what he later describes um, in, a, in a later sermon, he says, that was the voice of Jesus telling me to fight on. Mm -hmm. It was the voice of Jesus that caused him to stay consistent and to stay courageous, even in the face of backlash and in the face of oppression. And so I was really excited. Um, 
important to see that um, re regarding Dr. King because so often we think of the Holy Spirit as something that engenders privatized religion, mm -hmm. that keeps us from acting in the community, that keeps us from social justice. But what I tried to show was that not just Martin Luther King, but in the black religious tradition, even with Harriet Tubman, with Frederick Douglass, with many others, it is actually that religious experience yeah. of the mm -hmm. Lord, of the Holy Spirit that kept them um, on the path toward justice. I mean, we have, you have slave narratives where slaves heard from Jesus Christ to escape. They heard from Jesus to fight and to go back into ministry and to call other slaves out of slavery. So I'm just excited to see how we can broaden in this 90th year of King's uh, birthday, broaden this concept of the Holy Spirit to include social action as well as uh, mm -hmm. private san sanctification. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dr. Henderson, have you got anything else to say in reference to this? We're working around to Dr. Paul. Okay. We've got about three minutes. No, no I, just, I just, I think this is really important work, especially as we live in a time of so much despair. I think where we're looking for voices of power. Yeah. We're looking for powerful voices with powerful words. Yeah. Where those words have enough power and energy to carry a new generation, a new generation over the triumphs that, over the struggles they have now, and they're real. And so I turned to King once again and searched for just one example, one motivation that we can extend to another generation, and perhaps that generation will find the strength also out of spirit. He is truly a, a, a great leader. He yes. was a great, Martin Luther King was a great leader, and I think we've all been impressed with him and encouraged by him mm -hmm. and whatever. And, and that legacy is probably more powerful today than it, yeah, and, then, mm -hmm. and any time in history mm -hmm. since his death. You know. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think that. Uh, well, anyway, I think we've got about two minutes uh, mm -hmm. to go and. Uh, I, on this I can sort of speak uh -huh. to that. I think uh, what we need to say in terms of moving from here is where do we go from here? Dr. King raised that question in his last book, one of his last books. He wrote a book called The Trumpet of Conscience, also. But what he was concerned about is the fact that we, as the world's people have had the kind of scientific and technological advancements that have made the world a single neighborhood. But the question is, we have not used our spiritual genius mm -hmm. to make the world one of brotherhood and sisterhood. Better place. Mm -hmm. Brotherhood and sisterhood. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to go from here. Dr. King was a globalist, and often he, he's not understood in those terms. Mm -hmm. He said in his book, The Trumpet of Conscience, I'm a world citizen, and I speak out on world problems. So I think we have to understand him as a globalist who had a, a kind of understanding of where we should go from here in terms of the creation of what he called a world house that is inclusive, a world house that is respectful of diversity, a world house that is respectful not only of, of different race, of racial differences, but differences in terms of politics and religion, et cetera. So I think, I, I think we have to connect his understanding of spirituality with, with this idea of the world house, if we're going to understand Dr. King, because he was not simply a southern black preacher of an, uh, an American Gandhi. He was a world figure. Very good, and of course, during this last uh, half minute, let me thank the three of you for giving us that excellent information in reference to Dr. Martin Luther King. And I think it's especially important at this particular time in our history, as the three of you have indicated, to be able to call back mm -hmm. uh, in mind an individual as important and as strong as Dr. Martin Luther King. And I want to thank the three of you for bringing us that information. And let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of comments. Thank you and good morning.